Hello, I'm Anthony Hughes, and in this video, I shall be showing you the new features for harp pedaling added to Dorico 3, the advanced music notation software from Steinberg. Writing for harp brings a unique tactical challenge, as it is crucial to understand that certain notes are simply not playable by the harp without changing the pedal positions. There are seven pedals, one for each diatonic pitch in an octave, and they are positioned on either side of the harp, three on the left controlling the D, C and B strings, and four on the right for E, F, G and A. When each pedal is in its central position, the string sounds at its natural or unmodified pitch. When the pedals are in the upper position, the strings are slightly relaxed and play the flat in the pitch. When the pedal is depressed fully to its lower position, the string plays a sharpened pitch. Conventionally, harp music features pedal diagrams that inform the player which position to place each pedal, so that the correct pitch is sound. In Dorico 3, harp pedal diagrams appear by default in instrumental part layouts, and are set to not display in full score or custom score layouts. You can control this in layout options on the players page where you will find a new harp pedaling section. Harp pedaling can be displayed in two different ways, which can also be managed here in the layout options. You can show them using note names, as in this case, or by using a diagram, which indicates the position of each pedal on the left and right hand sides of the harp. Different layouts can display different appearances. The first thing you will notice about writing for harp in Dorico 3 is that the Notes Out of Range feature has been extended to show notes that cannot be played by a harp using the current pedal positions. This is extremely useful, as it immediately flags up the need for a pedal change. You can create harp pedal diagrams manually by specifying the position of each pedal yourself, or automatically where Dorico looks at the notes in the music and works out for you the ideal position of each pedal. In order to create a harp pedal diagram manually, use the Shift P playing techniques popover. Now you have two options. First, you can write out the note names. Use uppercase letters with a B for flat and hash for sharp. For example, I could type C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, and press return. However, you don't actually need to specify pitches that you would like as naturals. Dorico looks to see which notes you haven't included and automatically inputs them as naturals. So I could simply type C sharp, F sharp, G sharp, and yield the same result. Notice that now I have a harp pedal diagram, the notes no longer show as out of range. The second method is to describe the pedal positions, remembering the arrangement of the pedals each side of the harp. Use a hyphen for a pedal in its central or natural position. Use the caret symbol to denote a raised pedal to produce a flat, and the lowercase letter V for a lowered pedal or sharp. You must specify the position of all seven pedals, and you can optionally include a pipe character to help orientate yourself. So to recreate this same pedal diagram using the pedal positions technique, type Shift P to open the popover. Then remember the arrangements of pedals on the left of the harp are for D, C, B. So we need to type hyphen V hyphen. Then let's add a pipe character and move on to the right side of the harp. The E is natural, so another hyphen. Then both the F and G need to be sharpened, so two Vs and finally another hyphen to keep the A as natural. If you would prefer to let Dorico do the heavy lifting when it comes to working out which position each pedal needs to be in, you can make a selection and in the right menu, choose Calculate Harp Pedal. Dorico will look ahead and create a harp pedal diagram for you that works for as long as possible. This really takes the hard work out of creating harp pedaling and it's pretty fun too. By default, Dorico will assume that all pedals are at their central position at the beginning of each flow, and any sharps or flats will appear in the out-of-range red coloring. So I'd recommend 
letting Dorico calculate a pedal diagram at the start of the flow, which will be very useful for the player. Now, as you can see in this example, the pedal diagram is sufficient only for the very first bar. And looking at these red out-of-range notes, we can tell that a pedal change is required at the start of bar 2. So I can calculate a new pedal diagram quickly and automatically using the same command. And this time, you'll notice that Dorico produces only a partial diagram, specifying just the pedals that require a change of position. Partial pedal diagrams will be used by default when you engage Dorico's automatic Calculate Harp Pedals command. If you specify the pedaling manually using the popover, then remember I was saying earlier that any pedals you do not list will be interpreted as naturals. So just be aware of that when you are creating partial changes. You can control when and how partial changes are displayed in engraving options on the new harp pedaling page. You can turn it on or off completely or adjust how few changes are required to trigger it. While we're here, let me just show you that there are other options to control the design of pedal diagrams and also the default positioning rules. Of course, you can always override specific diagrams using the properties panel, including the appearance and whether to display partial pedaling. Finally, while we're here talking about harp music, I must show you the new glissando playback also added to Dorico 3. Now, when you add a glissando, it will play back beautifully by default, like this. But we've also added some great features. Let's add a manual harp pedal diagram here, changing the position of some of the pedals. Now, when we play back, the glissando will take into account the position of the pedals. I foresee a dramatic rise in the number of dream sequences being scored. Also in the properties panel, there's a control to delay the start of the gliss, and you can even specify by how long. I do hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please click the thumbs up button below to let me know you've liked it. And subscribe to the Dorico YouTube channel today to see many more videos like this one. I'm Anthony Hughes. Thanks for watching.